Module programming, reprogramming, flashing, no matter what you call it, it's doing the same thing. We're going to reprogram a module on the vehicle. You're going to have to make decisions about the procedures and the equipment that your shop is going to use because programming can be a little tricky, nothing to be scared of. It requires an investment in equipment and subscriptions from the OEs to get these updates. The subscriptions can be done on a CD or the website. Now, if you're working with a manufacturer that sends you a CD for these subscriptions, these updates, that means you're going to have to keep the CDs updated themselves. The programming itself, the updates, are going to be used to correct any factory bugs and to change the calibration on vehicles. It's really replacing software or firmware that isn't doing the job. And, you know, until recently, only the auto dealers were able to upgrade the module's firmware, and that took some expensive equipment. And then J2534 API was established because the EPA wanted anyone, including auto repair shops and car enthusiasts, to be able to upgrade the vehicle at a reasonable cost. J2534-2004, a mandated specification that the automakers who sell vehicles in the United States must conform to, must support aftermarket repair shops with J2534 flash reprogramming for emission-related modules. And that's all they're required to do, but many of the manufacturers now are allowing us to reprogram all modules. For example, a gem module on a Ford, not emission related, but we can go ahead and flash it. The Dash 1 version of J2534 defines a uniform hardware device and subscription software. Now the Dash 2 was the extensions for the CAN vehicle, single wire and CAN mix mode, and the AD inputs and the pin switching. Now when we look at number 3, the, the, the Dash 3 version of J2534, Manufacturers of pass-through devices are going to be able to certify their equipment. That's right, they're going to be able to certify their equipment. It's not in play right now. It hasn't been passed. So for now, when you can't find a certified piece of equipment, you're just going to look for a device that's validated by the automakers, and we'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now this API, this J2534 API, Application Programming Interface, is a rendezvous point between two pieces of software. You can see we have the software in the PC there and the software in the module on that Corvette there. And this J25 pass-through device is going to be the interface, the, a the application programming interface, API, between the two sets of software. As an example, a computer can use a printer from different manufacturers. Of course they can. The operating system and the printer driver communicate via an API even though each printer has different hardware. The computer can command the printer to print text or graphic because of this API. All printer drivers look the same to Windows. Now, there are exceptions, and that means you buy a cheap, non-validated printer at a flea market. It won't work on your computer. It's because it's not validated. It's not using the same API, and that's what we're saying about J2534 pass-through devices. If you're not using one the manufacturers have validated, then you're on your own. Now you're free to select the printer without worrying about software and compatibilities, and that's what J2534 API does. It makes all vehicle communication hardware look the same. Now the manufacturers are forced to release this software that updates the firmware on their vehicles, the fixes. The application has to run on Windows and use the J2534 API to communicate with the vehicle. And that's good news. Reprogramming software from the vehicle's manufacturers must be compatible with hardware supplied by the tool manufacturers. This tells us that the equipment and the vehicle manufacturers all have to work and communicate on J2534. It doesn't mean you can purchase equipment today and start programming modules today. There's some decisions that you're going to have to make about programming in your shop. When looking at the equipment, you want to decide which vehicle manufacturers you're going to work on in your shop. If your shop only works on one or two different models, that's the equipment you want to buy. If you work on most manufacturers, you're going to have to have equipment that has more coverage. Now, this is an advertisement off the Drew Technologies website for their Cardac Plus. Look at the last sentence. It is upgradable through firmware updates and expansion slots. This is the one we bought. 
and yeah, we went bought into their advertisement on their website, but we did it intelligently. It says it works on the newer automobiles, heavy-duty trucks, CAN networks. It's either Ethernet or USB. So it all works for us because it's upgradable. It's, we're not going to buy it, and it's going to be um, out of date here in uh, six months. So you buy what you want. This is the one we bought. You're going to have to go to the manufacturer's websites for these OEM service information. All right. So what you're going to do is in your web browser, type in that AA1 car dot com dot library dot oem websites dot html and when you type this in click enter and it takes you to this website this website has links to all the manufacturers and it has information about what their subscriptions cost right now let's concern ourselves with the links let's specifically look at the motorcraft link we'll click on this one here and it takes us to the motorcraft website a word about these websites. Every once in a while, the manufacturers update or change the appearance of their website. They don't do it often, but every once in a while. What I'm looking for now is technical resource. If they move that to the bottom of the page, the right of the page, I'm going to have to find it. So pay attention to what we're finding here, what we're looking for, not just where it's at. So we're going to click on technical resources, and it takes us to another web page. And right now, we want to find reprogramming and initialization. Now, you can see it there in red, and we're pointing to it. Look two underneath it, and you can see technical service bulletins. We'll talk about those in a minute. But right now, let's go to the reprogramming and initialization, and let's see what's on that web page. And when there's a scroll bar, that means you can scroll up and down on this page. So let's just go down a little bit and see what it's showing us. Here it's showing us that here's how you connect the pass-through device between the vehicle and the PC and here they're saying that these manufacturers have been validated as a third-party supplier for J2534 pass-through devices if you click on one of those manufacturers it's going to take you to that manufacturers website so you can find out exactly everything you need to know price and all about that device Let's go back to the website and scroll up and down. And here we found Ford Module Programming Process Overview. And it's telling us we're going to have to buy the subscriptions. We're going to have to download the subscriptions. We're going to have to connect our pass-through device to the PC and the vehicle. It's going to say run the programming. Number five is important there. The application will determine whether or not a new calibration file is available. That's important. What if your diagnostics, you're, you're trying to diagnose vehicle, and then you make a decision that the vehicle you're on needs the PCM reprogrammed. And you go through this whole process of reprogramming the uh, PCM. You get to the part in the Ford program here. It says, hey, we don't have a new calibration file. Uh, there's no one available. You have the latest. Maybe you want to rethink your diagnostics at that point. So going to these websites and really pay attention to what they tell you to really read them is important. Now let's scroll back up a little bit and find latest calibration information. This is what we were just talking about. Is there a update for the vehicle I'm working on? So let's click on that. And you can see that the module reprogramming initialization is going to cost us almost $60 here. Right? almost sixty dollars now note an SAE J2534 pass-through device is required and not included in the subscription they're telling you you got the hardware we'll give you the software but for now let's just scroll down and find those technical service bulletins that we were looking at a few minutes ago and when you click on that it tells you information about what's in this web page and it's saying to look at technical service bulletins on a short-term basis you have to give them 995 for a month it's 1995 and for a year it's 8995 you got to understand what you're buying here you're buying a subscription you can go into Ford's technical information and read how things work you can get technical service bulletins but in order to get a flash update you're going to have to go back and buy that 5995 subscription for the updates all right so let's go back to the uh, reprogramming and initialization and we're not trying to show you anything specific here we're just roaming around a website showing you how to use them 
here when you pick a reprogramming it tells you hey it's time to make another decision please select the desired reprogramming device do you want our diagnostic tester or do you want a generic J2534 pass-through device the manufacturer may default to their tester so you're going to have to make a conscious decision to click the generic pass-through device and then hit next so please remember there are many ways to perform programming wrong there's only one way to do it right Chrysler says it this way and I kinda like this not all J2534-1 devices are created equal so yeah use the ones that they have validated GM recognizes the device that was connected meaning that when you go into the programming and it's wanting you to select a pass-through device it does it for you it says hey we have recognized that the Cardec Plus from Drew Technologies has been connected and the fact that they recognize it mean they validated it so here is Toyota's website is your equipment on the list and that means the equipment that you want to buy is it on the list if it's not it's not validated by that manufacturer the problems that you can have when you're trying to reprogram a car the number one is not following the instructions exactly for example during the GM reprogramming if you fail to capitalize the first letter in each of these words you're gonna have a problem it may not let you do it now we're not trying to show you exactly what to do on a GM website go to the GM training video for that but when we have to select our pass-through device we have to type in the words generic pass-through device each first letter must be capitalized in order for it to be recognized so yeah you have to be focused and really follow the instructions another problem could be not maintaining the correct battery voltage during reprogramming and we'll show you how to do that in vehicle power now decide from the beginning that you're going to do things correctly by following the instructions you should also check on these websites which operating systems are supported here they're telling us that it's Windows SP uh, it's a uh, 2000 SP 2 or later Windows XP Pro SP 1 service pack 1 or later make sure your computer is updated and you if you really want to learn how to do all that you want to be able to check your computer go to the PC requirement training video back to our website now it tells us that in Ford's version they give us a minimum requirement for the PC and software requirement so all the manufacturers are going to tell us what we have to have at a minimum pay attention to that now there's another decision you're going to have to make are you going to do it off board or on board are you going to do it to at the DLC connector on the vehicle or are you going to do it with the computer on a desktop on board on the vehicle requires you to have a computer a high-speed internet connection programming equipment the vehicle and the subscription if you're going to do it on the desktop you're going to take the module out of the vehicle for some reason and put it on a desktop it's going to require additional equipment a test lead kit that that connects the PC to the uh, um, vehicles module here you can see we made our universal one ourselves here you're going to have to have some way to control ignition power on a computer and here's how our setup here you know because there are times when during reprogramming they want you to cycle the ignition on and off you're going to have to be able to do that you're going to have to have a high quality power supply that old shop battery charger isn't going to work it's going to be too dirty with AC ripple and destroy uh, possibly destroy the module and then if you're going to do it on a desktop you're going to also have to have the computer the high-speed internet the programming equipment the vehicles module and a subscription so we tend to do them on the car because it takes less equipment the person doing the programming is important consideration you know he's got to be able to read and follow instruction can't be the type of person that jumps to the bottom of the page and see what the bottom line is gotta be the type of person who can focus on the task at hand here's an example from Toyota the engine compartment hood must be open and, and the under hood ambient temperatures must not exceed 158 degrees the first thing I think of is what I mean what's a engine hood have to do with reprogramming but I don't care I really don't care at this point I'm the type of person who is going to read and follow the instructions exactly they say open that hood 
it's getting opened. You can see it's one of ten things. The last one is setting the parking brake. Now, my common sense tells me that's a liability thing. It has nothing to do with the reprogramming. But you can bet that this technician is going to set that parking brake because it's in the directions. Now, getting started. You've got to purchase the equipment. You've got to go to the manufacturer's website and sign up. When you get that first vehicle in your bay that needs reprogramming, you're going to have to go to the manufacturers and buy the subscription and then come back to this website and follow the instructions for that manufacturer's programming process. In summary, show caution, but don't be afraid of programming. I know you've heard stories and horror stories about programming. Oh, BMW takes 14 hours. Okay, how many BMWs are really going to do? So, are there horror stories? Yeah, but I'm not afraid of them because I know I can follow instructions and get through it. All good shops are going to end up doing this sooner or later. Treat it like any other new process. The fact that there's many fleets and retail shops programming shows us that it isn't that difficult and it can be done. Thank <laughs> you.